Hi, it's rant time, and this was prompted by a YouTube comment on my previous video for this fluke resistance calibrator from a viewer called Claudio D. And he mentioned that, well, he doesn't really care for these vintage teardowns, 30 year old bit of instrument in this case. And well, okay, fair enough, not a problem. But then he went on to make the comment, based on my comment, that I said the specs of this vintage bit of gear could be replaced with a $20 resistor in a box. And well, yeah, technically that's true in that one of the ranges, the spec for one range on this or for the ranges can be replaced by a modern $20 resistor, but that misses the entire point of this product. There's so much automation and compensation and uh, calibration which goes into a tweaking a box like this for performance over time and all the automated functionality that you can't possibly get by just shoving some resistors in a box. But anyway, that's not what I wanted to rant about. The true rant is about his next comment, which was that with these vintage teardowns, in this case 30 years old, is you know more for just entertainment value. You can't learn anything practical from them. Ah, oh, nothing could be further from the truth. What happens if you wanted to redesign, uh, to duplicate this product today, which you may want to do for some precision resistance calibration, uh, you know, exotic application in some industrial environment or something? It could very well be the case. How would you design it? Would you just put some resistors, $20 resistors in a box? No, the design would be exactly the same as what Fluke did 30 years ago for this product. You would have to use all the same tricks that they used, all the design stuff, all the compensation, all the thought that went into this, it's exactly the same. The only thing that would change, instead of using the uh, custom fluke made precision resistors, you just order them from DigiKey for 20 bucks each. But apart from that, everything else would remain the same. The digital stuff in here might be replaced with one microcontroller, but this analog board would be absolutely no difference. 30 years later, all the way, through each of the design steps, right from the low range resistors down here, you'd still have to do the full terminal compensation. You'd probably have to hand wind uh, those instead of buying them off the shelf perhaps to get the performance. Then for the lower range uh, reference resistors, you'd still have to use the top quality uh, relays in there with the multiple relay trick to try and uh, multiple contacts in there in parallel to try and get all of your uh, long-term errors and your contact resistance down to an acceptable margin inside your uh, the spec you're after. And then of course at the high end you would still have to use the special read relays in there with the ultra high uh, insulation resistance on them to um, ensure otherwise it's just going to screw up your whole thing. And then on top of that, you would still have to use right at the output there, you'd still have to use the Teflon standoffs and the other tricks which they used in there to do that. And once again, the special relays on top of the special relays to do the switching in there. And then right at the final output, you'd still have to use a special tellurium copper contacts. And that's a whole design aspect of this thing which would not change a bit, not one iota, 30 years later. Oh, yes, this may be a vintage design, but the design rules are not vintage. They're still as valid as they ever were. So watch these vintage teardowns, you might just learn something.